This is Kevin McMurray with TrackingSharks.com. Today I'm going to share a little piece of my own personal history with you. It's a tour on the MV Osearch back in 2015. If you're not familiar, Osearch is a group that goes out and tags a variety of sharks. Mainly you'll see a lot of news on the white sharks that they tag. Uh, they've tagged tiger sharks. They have turtles and alligators listed on their website where you can go, osearch.org and actually almost real-time track these species of marine critters. This was my first trip to the MBO search, so the camera work is not the best. I was so excited about being there. Uh, please keep that in mind as you watch. Also, the audio, sometimes when we get down near the engines, it's a little rough, uh, but I did try to fix it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you have questions. Yeah, basically how the, like the backbone of the operation is this whole platform. So right. That, that, that whole bit of raised deck there, essentially it's a giant forklift with that, that tower, lifts it up using a, the three big hydraulic rams that push it up, and, and what we do is we just raise it above the sidewall height here, and then there's another set of hydraulic rams underneath that push it out. The whole thing slides on a set of rollers along the... Along the the gap in the middle of the ship there. I got you. And that tower there sits sits over the edge, and then we can drop the whole platform down in the water. So, you know, we can drop it down about six feet underwater, and then using these small boats over here, we've got a contender, a 28 foot container, and a 26 foot safe boat, and we'll do all our fishing off them, and, and that'll that's where we'll hook the shark. So, I'll hook the shark on the hand line, and then and then bring it in. So they'll tow it in. And basically, the ship, the ship will be on an anchor, and I'll tow it in with the contender and drive up beside the platform while it's in the water, and then tow the shark into the cradle. So, once so they don't actually there, drive over the platform; they no. go to the side. Yeah, over to the side, and then and then Brad will uh, jump off, fill up the line, he's in, with the shark on the end. Uh, I never know. And they'll sort of triangulate the rope, so he'll, he'll wrap the, the line around that upright pole there. Yeah. And then so the boat keeps moving up this way, and so the line is pulling that from the shark to that pole to the boat. So as the, as the shark comes towards the cradle, as soon as it gets you know, over the cradle, we lift it up out of the water, and then the, you don't need the lines anymore, and it just sort of sits there. We put a towel over its eyes, and we put some, um, some big fire hoses in its mouth so it get the water flowing through its gills. Right. And so basically, you can sit there for amount of time, really, because it's been, Yeah, it's getting water. Swimming, so. How do you do the weight? The weight? How do you determine its weight? Uh, there's like a formula you use. It's, uh, I don't know. You get like the, the mass of it or something? Yeah, the girth. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure of the actual calculation. I just thought there might be like a scale or something. Like, no, oh, we've yeah. been talking about getting something like that. It's, uh, that'd be really cool to have, you know, just something like a weight bridge yeah. for a car or something. But, um, I mean, it gets hard when you're working with salt water and... and Oh yeah, it eats everything. Enough water, you know, it's, it's hard to get something on there, but but you know those the calculations are pretty precise. You can, you know, I think it's something like you get the girth, or the tail, the you got three coil length, you got total length, you got all the all these sorts of measurements you take and then plug it into the formula for the weight. So I got you. Put our tags on the satellite tags and the, the spot tags. Spot tags. Do you have any of those? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've got them somewhere. Have a look. Okay. And then we put acoustic tags. Take a pin clip, take a muscle plug, um, blood samples like before and after. Like before, the first thing we do is take blood samples, and then the last thing we do is take blood samples so we can determine how stressed the shark is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And you know, the data from that's been pretty good. Like, you know, that's one of the uh, one of the main criticisms of both searches, it stresses out the shark. But right, I've heard that. We've sort, of, sort of proved them wrong. We definitely have proved them wrong in that because, yeah, multiple times. Sharks, they're less stressed when they leave the lift than they were when they came onto it. So. Well, I mean, they bite each other and everything else. Yeah, that's right. That's an acoustic tag, so that'll sit inside the, inside the shark's stomach. Um, and then when it swims within 400 meters of a receiver, it uh, gives off the location. But yeah, that's not the spot tag. That's the, that's the acoustic one. I don't know. So do you sew that back in them? Yeah, yeah, just stick it in there in the guts, essentially. Hey, Todd, do you know if we've got any spot tags anyway? Uh, no, we left them all with heart. Oh, we did? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. They're just sort of like a longer thing with an antenna on it. Yeah, sticking up and we've got lots of different styles and, and uh, you know, working with different types of anti-fouling paints, so, so. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge is the anti-fouling. Really? We're, exp we're driving the experimentation on anti-fouling paint right now because they foul before the batteries run out. Wow, okay, excellent, thank you. Yeah, so the, uh, you, want the, you want the tag to last longer than the battery. Oh, you want the, the paint to last longer than the battery, but it's really hard because, you know, in salt water, obviously, everything. Oh, everything, uh, salt water kills everything. Yeah, so. Dude, you got enough fishing poles? Uh, I think so. I'm trying to get some more, but. <laughs> So yeah, these are all for catching bait, you know, we don't, we catch all our sharks on hand lines. So, uh, what, how do you do that? So what do you do? Are you catching the bait, you bring it in, you throw it over the side with a hand line, and you yeah. just wiggle it around basically? Yeah, basically, yeah, I mean, when you're sitting there and you're fishing on the boat and you're, you're creating all this fuss, like a big commotion really, like, we, you, you know, you sort of catch a fish, feel it on, and if you, if you don't want to bridle it up immediately, just sort of winding in slowly, so it's flapping around and, and bleeding and, and creating commotion around the boat. And that's what brings the sharks in. So I got you. A lot of the times they'll, they'll, you know, see the shark before they know what they're actually fishing for. So, you know, they could be sitting out here in the Gulf and they don't know what, what sort of sharks are around, but then they'll see a hammerhead, so they'll put a different a bait on or, or, you know, a different bait than what, what they would use for a tiger or a mako, you know? So, yeah. Well, what about, uh, are you concerned about the delayed immortality of the Hammerheads? Oh, the hammerheads are so sensitive, yeah. They're, uh, you know. Well, I knew a lot of people won't actually even fool with them because they're afraid they'll die, like, immediately. Yeah. But then I saw you guys tag, what, two this trip? Two, yeah, yeah, I think it was two, yeah. So they were scholar hammerheads. Um, we won't bring them on the, on the platform. Yeah, I saw you did it on the boat. So is that how you yeah. help prevent the stress? Yeah, well, no, just because it's, uh, we don't have, you know, once you got it on the hook, you don't want to take the time, so it's going to take another five minutes to get the thing on the cradle and out of the water, and then by that, by that stage, you know, you might have lost the fish, but uh, with, uh, if you do a boat, so all we do really is we'll put an acoustic tag and maybe take blood, maybe put a spot tag on, it just really depends on, on how the fish is looking, how healthy it is. Um, now what we're tracking from the app and the website is actually the spot tag, right? Not the acoustic. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. So acoustics, uh, the local institutions will, will be in control of them. So in the Gulf, there's a lot of Heart Research Institute acoustic arrays. So mm -hmm. um, they, they go out and they tag their own fish, their own sharks, and, and um, they track them just not. And they do that with snapper as well. A lot of a lot of different species actually. But yeah, it's like. This is, that's the, basically the rig we're using in the Gulf, so... Uh, wow, you know, that's the circle it. hook, right? Yeah, yeah, well, we use all circle hooks, so they set in the corner of the jaw. That's about a, I don't know what that is, I think that's an 18 o. And then all the ones sometimes they'll get liquid stuff. And what, what that is, is it's high tensile, but it's also made with, uh, I can't, can't remember now, two metals that are corrosive when they're, when they're put together. So that'll rust out. We have to leave it in the fish, uh, it'll rust out in three days, four days, sort of thing. I got you. What's it like? I mean, when you when you catch them, I know there's got to be that intense, like, let's go, let's do it. You know, yeah, it's, time sensitive. It's almost like organized chaos, I suppose. It's like everyone everyone's got a job to do. They know what they're doing. You know, we've only got five crew on here, so whatever we do, we're, you know, Brett and Todd will catch the shark, and, and then we'll, we've got to get the deck and everything else ready and going and running smoothly. So as soon as that shark comes on, it's like, all right, this is what needs to be done, and there's no sort of like adrenaline. Maybe, maybe the first couple of shots. Like, oh, shit, I got you. A cool job. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, I want to get this job done. It's a job. Yeah. It's a cool job. Yeah. Exactly. But it's a job. I love it. Yeah. And, and all these guys love it as well. They wouldn't be here. But, but uh, yeah, it's just like, all right, the main thing is that shark's got to live. Like, you, yeah. You've got to keep that shark healthy, keep it strong, keep it as, uh, as relaxed as possible, and, and, and get them to swim off healthily so we can, you know track it, get, get more, da more data from them and, and learn as much as possible, so, yeah. Well, what about, okay, before you, re as you release them, you gotta get the hook out. Yeah. Okay, what do you use to get the hook out? Just get your hand. Really? Okay, because the, the shark is do docile at that point. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, it's, it's been like, there, it's got the fire hoses in it, yeah. the towel. And it's not swimming either, so it's like, it hasn't got any, it can't like, 
open his jaw and get forward momentum all of a sudden. It's got to, it might open his jaw and thrash around, but it can't, like, you know, lurch at someone or, or it's, it's on the deck. So it's. Um, there's not a lot of head movement. No, and okay. there's not a lot of movement at all, really. Once they realize they're out of the water, they're probably, you know, they're experiencing gravity for the first time, they're sort of just. Freak out, like, hey! Yeah, right, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna conserve, I'm gonna relax and not do anything, and then. And uh, yeah, then, then they'll wake up when the water hits them again, and then they, you know, it's like getting back to, getting back to reality, I suppose. So when they get up on the thing, I see, you know, there's a lot of tail movement. That seems like it'd be the one of the dangerous spots. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, sometimes. You know, we've had, we've had a couple of instances where uh, some, some people get knocked around by the tail. They just take your legs out and you land on the deck. But that's it. It's, uh, you know, that, that's, when it first comes on, it'll probably, it'll probably sometimes, the small sharks do a lot more. They've got a lot more sort of energy and, and veracity and, and uh, you know, uh, they might swiggle around and then wave their tails and, and, and try and sort of get out of it, but the bigger sharks, they'll... They're just kind of like, hey, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, Whatever. it's a lot of energy for them to move, so, especially out of water, so they'll, they'll sort of realise that they can't do that and they'll, they'll just calm right down. So. It's important to have mustard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mate, my mate freezes here, so we've got albacore, which is a tuna. Dude. Yeah. Basically, skipjack tuna, so you just sort of have them, so you fry them up in a bit of steel wire, and then attach that to the hook, so the actual tuna's not sitting on the hook, which is sort of dangling in the current. And ideally, the shark comes up and takes our whole tuna and sort of put the second corner of them out. That's way. interesting. I guess, like, is there a point to like not having the fish on there, like if it were on there, would it be less likely to actually set the hook? No, no, no. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, I think it doesn't matter whether you got off the fish or in the fish's mouth, you know, if it's going uh, to, if the sharks are going to come and get it, then jump out. Once again, we're talking about sharks, not little tiny fish. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, I think, um, I think one of the main reasons why it's just you know, dangling the car that's a good idea too. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because you want to actually keep it up and towards the mouth as close yeah. as possible. Yeah, that's right. And we've got bricks that, that stop the shark from swallowing it. So we have a little a bit of dowel, a little bit of like a wooden plug or something with three bits of dowel attached to it. It's sort of have so we've got a hook here. And this rig up here, so if the shark is, wants to go and, and keep the trunk on the hook, then the, the bits of dowel itself are going to hit its nose and, and it won't be able to swallow the hook. So, I got you. Yeah. It, that's hard to explain. I need to show you what we have. Yeah. So, is this your life rack? <laughs> Just in case things go bad? It's the bourbon barrel right there. Yeah. It's, uh, this company here does a special low surge blend. Oh, is that actually like whiskey in here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of uh, gear you got here? Anything good? No, uh, just the PCs and uh, it's all the old stuff, really. I like Aqualon. That was the first dive setup I had. Yeah. I'm surprised you're using such old gear, though. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, no, we got, you know, we've got a mix of stuff. We've got a whole room downstairs full of, full of dive gear. Oh, actual, like, this is just the kind of stash for it, right? Oh, just if someone's been using this stuff, I think. Still yeah. cool. Yeah. But yeah, we've got the hydraulic pumps here. We control the crane, the anchor, and the... And the Lift. So I have um, you know, two 75s and 50. Um, you got a water maker over here, so reverse osmosis. Gotcha, so you actually create your own water. Yeah. So or clean your own water. Two separate systems, yeah. Clean your own water. So yeah, we can make about 140 gallons an hour. So. Damn, dude, that's some serious water. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, when we've got 30 people on board, you know, you need a lot of water when you're out at sea. So, so you got 30 people on board, but five that actually do. Plus five plus scientists. Scientists and film crew. Okay. Um, so we uh, have about, you know, uh, seven, eight scientists and seven or eight film crew. Uh, um, maybe four or five film crew. And like a few people from the office will come that uh, sort of oversees things. And uh, yeah, sort of depends on what's going on. But, yeah, we try and keep it as small as possible. So, so process and gets, you know. Yeah. A lot of things break. 
How you like those new Yamaha engines on the uh, chase boats? Yeah, they go over these new ones though. Oh really? They're about three years old, those ones. So. Salt water or clean fresh water for your laundry? Water fresh, yeah. Well, I know you like, I was thinking when you take a shower, you know, you'll do a salt water wash and then you do a fresh water rinse so you can serve the water. Yeah, yeah. No, so right. I didn't know if you had to do that or not. No, we got plenty. Of, plenty of, we got the tank, so. Yeah. This is Fernando and then Louie on your Yeah. Hey. yeah. Hey, What's up? Yeah. Smells good. Yeah, we <laughs> love. This is the galley. We only got one chef, but 30 people most of the time, so. But that's a lot of fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, come check out the bridge. This is where we sort of all hang out while we're traveling, you know? Like, uh, a little air conditioner, too? Oh, yeah, the whole boat's air conditioning. Oh, thank God, man. Yeah. No, especially when we're in Australia, you know, like it was. Pretty hot over there, so. But yeah, we got this is noble tech, this is what everything sort of feeds into. So got your radar here, depth sounder there, got your engine gauges, autopilot, throttle throttles, then you got like your mechanical and your I don't know electrical and mechanical steering for when your autopilot goes or you need to do that and then you got your backup backup manual over there. So So you're actually steering using the engines? With throttle, so you throttle sometimes, left, right. Yeah. Sometimes, like uh, if you need to skin that that way, you just pull that one back in reverse. And I noticed the uh, rudder, you know, unless that's just fake. Where that? Over the other the, side. The wheel. Oh yeah, no, that's like we. You, you know, really all can. these fails like that. If the autopilot this and these fails, then we can use the manual. I forgot computers. <laughs> you just put it in the course, and it yeah, pretty yeah. much does it. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Sorry for the quick cut off ended up having Adam take a picture of me as I was sitting in the captain's chair acting like I was driving the ship. did have a few still shots to share. This is the deck and the shark lift from the bridge. If you look at the gangplank on the port side, the, the right side of the ship, you can see several boards in front of the gangplank. These lift up and the shark lift hydraulics actually slide through the gap. Uh, you can see how big the surface area of the shark lift is compared to the two people standing up at its tip at the top there. Here's a photo of the safe boat in blue and the contender in white. As Adam said, the contender is the main fishing boat. Uh, once a shark is hooked, they will use the contender to guide the, the shark to the main ship and over top of the platform. I've been back several times since this trip, and it still amazes me how quick everyone jumps into action and knows exactly where to go once the shark is hooked in on the lift there. I've got more footage. If you guys like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Maybe I can put together another version, newer one. It ships changed some, been painted, uh, looks good. I also have some footage from on deck. Um, anyways, hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for other videos. You can follow us on Facebook at Tracking Sharks. We've got a group you can get on and, and share your knowledge of sharks. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support us directly. It's patreon.com slash tracking sharks. Of course, we have the website trackingsharks.com as well.
Uh, thank you for everything you guys do, for watching the videos and subscribing. Be safe and get wet soon out there.